In this video, let's talk about drawing the Lewis structure for the phosphate ion. Uh, so this was one of the most cop, uh, the most popular ion that you will see in your general chemistry courses. And uh, even let's talk about the uh, the 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 resonance structures. And, and this is why phosphate, the phosphate ion, is one of the most stable ions. And the, so they love to undergo hydrolysis because of the the idea of resonance. So let's go about drawing the Lewis structure. So I typically draw my lower structures by counting the total number of electrons that I have to place. So in this case, from the periodic table, um, we should be very comfortable getting the number of valence electrons from the periodic table. So on the periodic table, we have something like nitrogen, phosphate, or phosphorus, etc. And over to the right, we might have oxygen and sulfur. And then over to the right, again, we might have fluorine and chlorine right so the idea in the periodic table is that anything in this row would give us five valence electrons six valence electrons seven valence electrons and then the noble gases etc right so from the periodic table we get directly that phosph phosphorus should give me five valence electrons while oxygen should give me six right so so that's right from the periodic table so in this case, what's the total number of electrons that I have to place? Well, 4 times 6, that's just 24, plus 5, that would be 29. But remember now, this negative 3 here uh, just essentially means that the compound has gained 3 uh, electrons, right? So 29 that we've counted plus 3 should give me a total of 32 electrons. Right? So we have 32 electrons to place. So let's go about putting our, our, our molecule together. So usually, let's let me move the screen down a little bit. Right? So usually, the atom, the atom furthest to the left in the, in the formula is usually my central atom. In this case, we could assume that. So let's go ahead and put our four oxygens around the phosphorus. And the first thing I like to do, since I have 32 electrons to place in this case, is just form single bonds. So that's the least we could do at this point. So I'm just going to form single bonds. And again, we should know by now that single bonds are consist of two electrons each, right? In this case, it would be one from the oxygen and one from the phosphorus, and it would be and so forth. So what's the total number of electrons we've placed thus far? This would be two, four, six, eight. Right now, remember, phosphorus is one of those elements can actually that can actually have an expanded octet. So do not you shouldn't be freaked out if there's more than eight electrons around phosphorus. However, oxygen usually satisfy. So we need to find a way to put together the structure where oxygens, where the oxygen molecule, the oxygen atoms satisfy the octet rule. And we could see what's up with the phosphorus. Right. But essentially we still must have 32 electrons in the formula. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to form a double bond here. I'm going to see what that takes me. So in this case now, this oxygen now has two, four, six, uh, I'm sorry, well, two, four, it only has four valence electrons around it. So then I could go ahead and put the forms in a pair of lone pairs around it to see if that satisfies the octet rule. So I have two, four, six, eight. So this oxygen is good. Now you might ask me, why didn't I form a, uh, let's say a triple bond around this oxygen, right? I, I wouldn't need to per se because phosphorus, in essence, its octet is already full, right? So it has two, four, six, eight. So m the, the logic is I want to be able to fulfill oxygen first because I know that has to satisfy the octet rule. And then I take a look at phosphorus. Now, these oxygens, the octet rule are not satisfied, right? Remember again, we said that we're going to leave the electrons for, um, for um, we're not going to, we're not going to pertain, we're not going to care, we're not going to cater to phosphorus right now. But again, we've put three pairs of lone pair around this oxygen. And as, as you can see, this becomes two, four, six. So this becomes two, four, six, eight. So this oxygen is satisfied. And essentially I could do the same thing around this oxygen, right? So this becomes two, four, six, eight. That oxygen is satisfied. I could do the same thing around this oxygen. And this oxygen becomes two, four, six, eight. So this oxygen is satisfied. Now, 
so this phosphorus has an expanded octet right so we shouldn't be surprised like we said before so let's count the total number of electrons that we've counted and how much is actually in the formula so we've, we've used 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 20 22 24 26 28 30 32 so we know that this is actually a plausible structure for the molecule because all my oxygen's valence, the, the octet rule is satisfying for all my oxygens. Now the phosphorus, again, it is satisfying in this case, but it's actually more than eight, but phosphorus is one of those atoms that it is allowed to have an expanded octet. Now, the last thing I want to mention is that this is actually an ion. So we're not actually done until we put our ion in parentheses. Now, this is actually a three minus charge. Now, we can actually do the formal charges and see where these negative charges are coming from, right? So my formal charge shortcut is to simply look at the atom of interest. So in this case, let's say I want to look at um, oxygen's formal charge. So I take oxygen um, formal charge um, valence from the periodic table, which would be six. And then I simply subtract that from the number of the total number of electrons around the oxygen that's contributing to the oxygen. So in this case, the number of valence electrons in this case would actually be a uh, number of total electrons around this oxygen. Let's say this oxygen is of interest. It would be two, four, six, and this would be seven, right? Because remember, this is a double bond. So one electron is coming from the oxygen, another is coming from the phosphorus. We do not care about the one coming from the phosphorus, or we're only looking at the oxygen's electron. So this becomes six minus seven, and this would give me a negative one charge, right? So in the formula, you can actually see this, uh, this actually gets a negative charge. And if you quickly realize this is in the same position as this, which is in the same position as this, right? They're equal, right? So there's no change in bonds or lone pairs around these. So all these are negative one using the same uh, method that we've used to come up with the formal charge. Now, as you could see that we could actually form numerous resonance structures with this. So if you see me, I could actually take one of these electrons, move and form a double bond. And at the same time, I could move these electrons in the, in the form of double bond into lone pairs. So if I redraw my structure, I have a double bonded oxygen to a phosphorus that's now single bonded. Right? And there's my two lone pairs that I now have. And these stay the same. Right. So I still have my negative three formal charge. Now this becomes neutral. I still have a negative one charge on all these. And as you can see, I could actually do another movement. Right. Now I could actually take these electrons. Right. So let me. So right. I'm sorry. But I could take these electrons, form a double bond here, and then kick these electrons back on this oxygen. Right? So now the double bond moves. So the only thing I'm doing is moving my double bond because I can move it, right? And so these are actually what we call resonance structures. And so let me move my screen over a little bit, right? So now this becomes, I still have my phosphorus in the middle. Now I have the double bond here. I have a single bond here. I have my lone pairs around it, right? And now this becomes a double bond because that's where my arrow is pointing. This still is my, so let me move this down a little bit, right? So this is still my single bond and this is still a single bond. I still have my negative three charge on the molecule. Right. So now this becomes a negative one. This is a negative one. This is a negative one. This is still neutral. Right. Because we've said that we've talked about how we've calculated a formal charge. Right. So if you do those, I'm simply taking a shortcut. But if you do the formal charges, you will actually see. And again, negative one plus a negative one plus a negative one will give me a 
will give me a negative three. And you can actually see that we can actually draw one more um, resonance structure. So let me zoom out, right? But as you can see, I could actually draw one more resonance structure uh, with the molecule, right? So in this case, I could actually actually I could actually take these electrons form a double bond here and get these electrons back on the oxygen. So in this case, I would end up with something that looks like this, right? I will still have my phosphorus in the middle. Now I've had now I formed a double bond right there. This becomes a single bond. This is still my single bond, and this is still my single bond. Right, so the only thing I'm doing now is filling in my electrons. Right, and as you can see, we, we get four resonance structures for the phosphate ion. So, this is why in chemistry, biochemistry. It is very easy for us to cleave ATP and ATP wants to be cleaved because the idea is that these phosphate this phosphate molecule is actually very stable on its own because of the abundance of resonance structures.